Hey there, fellow C and C++ developers. Today, I would like to talk about something very sensitive, something that has ashamed us and sometimes even affected our mental health. And no, I'm not talking about compiler errors, but about building our projects that include third-party dependencies. Yes. Traditionally, we have used makefiles to build our projects. And we had to have these dependencies installed in our development systems, or its code has to be somehow included in our project. Get some modules, we copy it, well, several methods. Thankfully, the tools have improved a lot through the last years. The last couple of decades have made a difference, but not all of the developers are taking advantage of them and some of them not even at all. So let's talk about that. Unless you live under a rock, you will probably know that other developers using other backend languages have very nice tools to do this. Take Golang as an example. They have Go mode and they can bring code third-party dependencies from other repositories in the internet and in integrates this code flawlessly and takes care of the versioning and everything that is required for that. Are you jealous? Should be. But the Rust fellows, they also have Cargo. Cargo takes care of all the building process, feature flags included, dependencies, versioning, even works across workspaces that have several things that can be built at the same time. Are you envious? Well, we should be no more because in this video, we're going to talk about CMake and Conan. And hopefully by the end of the video, you will know how to do this with your C or C++ project. In this video, we, number one, will create the structure from scratch for a project that can be built using CMake, Conan, and integrated with Visual Studio Code. Number two, we will create the configuration from scratch for CMake to give it the instructions for building the whole project, all the pieces. Number three, we are going to create the configuration file and use Conan to bring the dependencies from the internet and incorporate them into our project. And number four, we are going to put all of this together, build from the command line, but also build from Visual Studio Code using the, the Visual Studio Code extensions that help you with CMake. Want to see it? Come with me. We are going to focus on a project that produces a library, which uses a third-party package. The library is then used together with some other source code to produce a binary. The same structure can be extended to have more libraries or even multiple binaries. In this case, the third-party package is the MongoDB driver that allows you to connect to a MongoDB Atlas cluster or to a local MongoDB database. As you can see here in this Visual Studio Code window, I am in an empty directory other than the Visual Studio Code configuration. So I'm going to create the whole structure for my project from scratch, and I'm going to start by creating a new folder that I'm going to call source. Inside of this folder, I'm going to create a file, and the file is going to be called main.cpp, and it will contain the code for our binary. I click outside and create a new folder that will be dedicated to the library. So I put the name of the library here, in this case, library n. And inside of this library n, I'm going to create two folders. The first one is going to be for the source code of the library. And the second one is going to be for the headers. So is the include directory. Inside of the source directory, I'm going to create a file, which is going to be library n.cpp. And inside of the include directory, I create a file that is going to be called library n.h for header. Now that we have all the pieces in place, let's write the code. Inside of the header file, we are going to do what we normally do in every header file, that is, protect ourselves from multiple inclusion. And inside of that, we declare the class that we plan to use in the library. 
Here, we're going to define a public constructor. And finally, when we save this, it's properly formatted and we have the code ready. Let's move on to the library CPP file. Here, I'm going to include the header that I have just defined for the library. And then I'm going to declare the implementation of the constructor that we defined there. The plan is to use the MongoDB driver here. I'm going to do the simplest invocation of code in the library. But in order to do that, I need to have the proper header that will offer me the type that I plan to use in the constructor. So now that I have that, I can do this invocation of an instance. So that's it. I have my library completed, and now let's move on to the main CPP. And here, I'm going to include the header for the library that we created. Not the MongoDB uh, header, because we are not going to use it here. And I declare the main function, which is where things are going to happen for the binary. And I create an instance for the MongoDB client, the MDB client that I created, that I declare in the library. So now I save this one and I have everything ready to go. And I save also the library one, just in case, and we're ready. We're going to use CMake as the build system for our project. The instructions to CMake are provided in the CMake lists text file. So let's create one. Let's click outside of the files and the directories. And here at the top level of our project, we are going to write CMake lists.txt. That is how the configuration of CMake is called. Here, the first thing that we have to say is what is the minimum version of CMake that we allow for this to run? So we are specifying here version 3.15, and we define the project that we will be using, which in this case is going to be called Cool Project, and is version 0.1, and the languages are C++ here. It could be more, it could be C, or it could be exclusively C if this is what you're doing. The next thing that we want to do is to define what CMake has to do regarding the library. So we include the library here, using the library name, and this is the directory where the source code is located. And we also specify where the includes are. Next is declaring how to build the executable, the binary. And we're going to use the same name for the binary as we declare in the project, so it will be cool project. And the source code for this binary is under source slash main CPP. The binary requires to have the library that we have created previously linked to it. So this is what we say here, target link, libraries, and binary linked to the library that we have created. And that should be it for now for the CMake configuration. The build instructions that we have just written would be suitable for projects with one library and one binary. You could add more libraries and other binaries using the same CMake commands with the corresponding data. But if you want to bring a third-party dependency, your options with CMake are more painful. This is where Conan comes to the rescue. Conan is an open source package manager for C and C++ that simplifies the process of integrating third-party dependencies in our project. It is an alternative to Microsoft's BC PKG, but they have slightly different approaches. They both have repositories of third-party dependencies and can be configured to include the ones that you need in your project. However, while BCPKG uses a series of tags that define the versions of the dependency in the repository, and they are all tested to work together, Conan allows you to choose independent versions for each dependency. You can choose individual versions with BCPKG, but it requires some extra effort. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is use Conan with the dependency that we are going to add. It has to be installed, and there are instructions here in the Get Started section. I already have it installed in my machine, and I use Homebrew because this is a Mac system. But the thing that we're going to do is to look for the dependency in Conan Center. So here, we're going to search for the one that we want, 
which is MongoDB. And I type Mongo and let's see what it comes out. So we have the Mongo C driver and the Mongo C++ driver. We're going to use this one. And when you click on it, you see that it appears the version that is going to be available. It explains how to do it. And not only that, you can copy the configuration that you have to add in your Conan file.txt. So this is what we will be doing. And there are instructions here to add the dependency in CMake. So let's go step by step. First, we will create a Conan file.txt and then we will add this to CMake. So now that we have the information about the dependency that we want to introduce, we go here, click on the side of the file so we can create a file at the top level of our project. And this file is going to be called conanfile.txt. You could also use the Python version. It's more powerful, but for the sake of simplicity and because we don't need any special functionality in this project, we're going to go with a TXT version. Here, we're going to put a piece of code that we saw in our web page. And then with this in place, we will be able to run Conan and create uh, the configuration for our project. Let's do that. The other thing that was suggested in the web page of Conan Center for this dependency was to add a couple of commands to our CMake lists file. So let's go there. And here we're going to add first command that will tell it to find the package that has been downloaded by Conan. So that is find package Mongo C++ and flag it as required and link it where we need it. In this case, it will be in the library, not in the binary, because this is where we use the MongoDB driver in this case, okay? So that should be it. Let's save the file. And now we can go to the command line in order to check if this is working. So Conan requests us to have a profile. The profile is a description of our system, the one that we're using to compile. And it holds information about the architecture, the compiler version that you have, and so on. So you just have to run this command, and it will do that for you. It will collect this information. The thing is that in this case, I already have a profile, so this is going to fail. You can use dash dash force in order to get a new profile, but this one is already created for me, and it works, so I don't need to regenerate it. If you haven't had Conan installed before, then it will take almost no time, but it will gather the information and it will put it in the profile file that is similar to the one that you are seeing there. The next thing is using Conan itself to install the thing. So use the Conan file, install everything that is required in this directory, put your stuff in the build directory, and if there's something that is not available as a binary, then you can build it, okay? So we're going to run this one. It will take almost no time because I have already installed the MongoDB C++ driver in my machine. But if this is the first time for you, it will take a little bit of time in order to get it up and running there. As you can see in our project, the build directory will have been created and this CMake user profile presets.json will be there too. The rest should be exactly the same as it was. Now, with this configuration, we can build from the command line. Let's do that. The first thing that we want to do is to check what is the preset that Conan has created to help us build without having to define all these options. So we ask CMake to list the presets that are available, and it tells us, oh, there is one that is called Conan Release, and this is the one that we plan to use. So we use CMake again from the command line. And this command line is telling CMake to configure according to that preset. So it generates the information for being able to build. And now finally, what we do is use another command line that does also with the same preset, the build process. So it takes some time, not much, because we have this built before and this is the build target which has been compiled and completed 
100%. But before I move on, let me share with you that if you get this warning too, you can safely ignore it if you are in a macOS system because that is related to command line tools for Xcode. So well, we have the proper building. And now let's see how to use this with our Visual Studio Code project. As you can see here in my extensions, I have installed CMake that helps me edit the CMake files properly and CMake tools, which will help me to build, debug, etc. using the configuration provided by the CMake. So what I'm going to do is go back to this CMake list and I'm going to use the command palette and reload the window. I would like to be able to compile from this Visual Studio Code. And when I reload this, Visual Studio Code is going to read my configuration here and try to figure out what to do. So I have to go to the reload window, developer reload window here. If you don't have it, just type reload and enter, and it will reload the project and read the CMake configuration. Let's ignore this for a moment. And we don't need this. And it's asking me what is the preset that I want to be using. So I'm going to go with the Conan release preset that I was using before. And once I have selected that one, it knows how to deal with the whole project and it creates the whole configuration here. So now if I go to CMake tools, you can see that I have the whole project here and I can build it, or I can also do other tasks that are related to the project. Let me move this a little bit down. So you can run the project, you can debug it. In this case, I'm just going to build it and it has compiled very fast. And this, just for the sake of it, yes, CMake dash dash build, build this one. I'm going to clean the build and build it again from scratch here. And as you can see, it builds perfectly. Not only that, I can run it from here. And as you can see, that's nothing because it doesn't even have a C out, but it compiles and RAM the project that I define. So that's it. In this video, we have explored all the options that we have in order to sharpen our tools and take advantage of them for building our C or C++ projects. We have used CMake to take care of the building process. We have used Conan to bring the dependencies, the third-party dependencies into our project. And we have used both the command line and Visual Studio Code while you move to a proper editor that is called Emacs. Just kidding. But I hope that this has been useful to you. And if you have other ideas on how to improve your C and C++ development, let me know. Stay curious, hack your code, see you next time.